Hi there, uh, my name is Sebastian Quist. I am the Curator of Invertebrate Zoology at the Royal Ontario Museum. This episode of ROM From Home is gonna be slightly different. Uh, the first thing is, of course, that I'm not at home, although I'm in my home away from home, uh, my office at the ROM. And the second reason is that I wanted to talk a bit more about sort of collections in general, uh, rather than a specific object or specimen, although I will be showing also a specific object and specimen. Um, a bit later. Uh, one of the main reasons that I, that I wanted to talk about collections in general is because I was fortunate enough to be able to do some field work quite recently and I wanted to show you a couple of the things that we, that we actually collected there. Um, but the collections that we hold at the ROM and for that matter any museum in the world are the heart and, and soul of the institution. Um, as most of you probably know, only a fraction of the, of the specimens and objects that we hold at the ROM are shown on display. Uh, the rest are in vaults behind the scenes or at one of our satellite collections locations that we hold around the city. Uh, but whether it be you know, a, a snail or a cultural object or a piece of art, um, I like to think that, that the collections provide a snapshot of life in a particular region of the world at a particular given time. Now, when it comes to natural history collections in particular, the analogy that I like to use is quite simple. I like to think of every specimen as a photograph that has information in its own right. And that information is about, you know, the, what, what the world looked like at a specific time, in a specific region, and with a specific group of animals. And if you take those photographs, and by that I mean, of course, collections of specimens, uh, if you take those photographs and you string them up next to each other, if you have enough of them, then those pictures will become a moving image that will explain how evolution happens uh, throughout time and throughout space. And in fact, natural history collections are rather unique in that they can show what has happened in the past, they can tell us something about the present, and they can also predict the future. And so these photographs are very, very important pieces of information in order to string together this moving image um, that we call evolution. In many ways, human involvement now is lessened in the world. So I think it's an opportune moment to actually do field work with less of an impact uh, that, that comes from humans. So it's probably a good time to build collections because of that. Um, but as I mentioned, I was lucky enough to do some field work. We were up in Northern Ontario, uh, came back only last week and um, if you don't know my research, I can tell you that I work mainly on leeches, and I wanted to tell you a bit about leech collecting. Uh, when we do leech field work, we use a variety of collection techniques, one of which is um, just using a, a regular aluminum plate that we fold in two. Uh, we bait it with a piece of liver, cut some holes in the plate, and then we tie it uh, with a piece of string so that it's easy to get, get to again. Throw it into the water, wait a couple of hours, and hope that we have leeches inside. The other, the other uh, technique that we normally use when we do field work uh, was very successful now in Northern Ontario. And what we do is we simply wade into the water bare-legged and let the leeches come to us. So one of the main species of leeches that we were looking for during this field trip is called Macrobdella decora. And the common tongue, it's called the North American medicinal leech. Now this is a blood feeding leech. And it's a leech that is quite important for medicinal purposes. It's the, the main leech that has been used for medicinal purposes in North America. Now it hasn't, it's not the one that's most commonly used these days, but it is one that has been used in North America. And you might be able to find it in your cottage. Ontario seems to be sort of headquarters for this particular leech. It has a green or black back to it, as you can see. And if I manage to flip it over, you should be able to see an orange or dark red uh, belly to it. And then it also has 22 orange dots along the midline at the top. It is important because it has very, very strong anticoagulants or blood thinners in its saliva. And one of the reasons that we wanted to collect this particular species on this collection trip is because one of my students, Rafael Iwama, is actually working on trying to understand the origin of anticoagulants in leeches, how they came to be. So I wanted to show you this particular specimen, talk a bit about fieldwork. Um, thank you for tuning in and thank you for your continued support to the ROM, especially since our reopening uh, very recently. I'm Sebastian Quist, tuning out.
Thank you.